Right. Um, okay. I'm Julia Donaldson. I'm a children's writer. I live in Scotland, in the UK, and um, I'm over here in San Antonio primarily um, to attend a reading conference, a big international reading conference. But I was so excited to find out there's a this fantastic library here. So I'm going to do an event in the library, and I'm hoping loads of people will turn up because. Well, I've got a whole bag of props. I'm going to be acting out stories about dragons and stories about um, the Grappolo, which is probably my, my most well-known book. Um, yeah, the Gruffalo is, um, well, he's quite legendary um, back home, I have to say, but um, uh, he hasn't quite made it in the States yet. So I'm hoping all that's going to change. He's, um, he's uh, a monster, but you start off at the beginning of the book thinking he's just a figment of this little mouse's imagination, but oh no, the, the, the real Gruffalo um, appears in the middle of the book um, to be real, and the mouse has to... Um, where's the picture of him? Here we are. And um, he's got purple prickles all over his back, a poisonous wart on his nose, and the poor little mouse has to find a way of outwitting um, this terrible monster, but he's very, very brainy, the mouse, and brain triumphs over brawn. We've just arrived. Um, my husband and I, he's a very important part of the show. He's going to be bringing his guitar along for the event, singing, acting some of the characters. We brought two huge bags of props. So we've got, um, well, we've got lots of fish, because one of the stories is um, called The Fish Who Cried Wolf. So we're going to probably act that one out We've got um, some dragon, dragon's heads, so we're going to be acting out um, this story. It's called A Gold Star for Zog. Um, it's about a very, very ultra keen dragon who goes to dragon school but never kind of wins a gold star. And we're, I'm going to get the audience to, they won't just be the audience, a lot of them will be being flying dragons and um, different animals and so on. So it's very interactive and songs as well we're going to be including. Back home I have um, the role of children's laureate. It's a two-year role um, where you're kind of the spokesperson for, for children's books and reading. And um, my special passion really has been libraries because I'm not sure about the situation here but back home they're really under threat. Their budgets are being cut. A lot of libraries are closing. And I feel so strongly that, well, it's, it's a shame for everyone, but for children, it's an absolute disaster. You know, if you haven't got a library, which is easier to get to, how are you going to find out the whole range of books there are? How are you going to discover your favorite authors? So I've been really campaigning to, to keep them open. I think these days, when libraries are cut back, bearing in mind that bookshops are going as well, and of course it costs money, to get a book from a bookshop, but even if you had the money, um, if there's no bookstore in your area, if there's no library, uh, you're just not going to discover the whole range of books. You may never become a reader. And when people talk about e-books and, oh, we'll all be able to just download books, uh, little children are not going to be going online and saying, I'm going to browse Amazon and see what books are suitable for my age group you know that you need those physical books when the children are young or we won't have the generation of readers that are going to be reading electronically mm -hmm. i was delighted to come to the library this morning just to look around and i found that all the children are coming going to get this fantastic goodie bag it's little little gruffalo bag and it's got uh, one of my other books oh no it's got gruffalo activities inside it so everyone's going to get one of those to take home. So I hope to see loads of people there tomorrow. Back home we have a National Libraries Day in February and last year I wrote a, a poem about libraries which goes like this. It's more of a rap really than a poem. Everyone is welcome to walk through the door. It really doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. There are books in boxes and books on shelves. They're free for you to borrow so help yourselves. Come and meet your heroes old and new from William the Conqueror to Winnie the Pooh. You can look into the mirror or read the times or bring along a toddler to chant some rhymes. The librarian's a friend who loves to lend, so see if there's a book that she can recommend. Read that book, and if you're bitten, you can borrow all the other ones the author's ever written. 
Are you into battles or biography? Are you keen on gerbils or geography? Gardening or ghosts? Sharks or science fiction? There's something here for everyone, whatever your addiction. There are students revising, deep in concentration, and school kids doing projects, finding inspiration. Over in the corner, there's a table with seating, so come along and join in the book club meeting. Yes, come to the library, browse and borrow, and help make sure it'll still be here tomorrow. Um, I think that it's lovely for you know to just read a book and immerse yourself in that book privately but it's also just great to read stories aloud especially stories for younger children they were designed they were written really to be read aloud whether it's at bedtime or what i really like doing is acting the stories out with a group of children that's what i do when i go into schools and as children's laureate i've created a whole website about that about dramatizing picture books it's called uh, it's called www picturebookplays.co.uk and it's got lots of footage and um, tips about reading stories aloud and acting out stories. Oh. <laughs>